Okay, we have uh, listed at least one list of uh, the possible different stages of project management and therefore the system development life cycle. And it is a cycle because uh, when you get to the revision stage at the end, basically you're going to go through the the whole thing all over again. Uh, but, um, yeah, as I said, uh, there's, you know, different uh, numbers that people will put in there in terms of uh, the number of stages. Some will have less, some will have more. But each stage itself is uh, sub divided into parts or subdividable into parts it depends on the size of what you are doing and so you are going to have different stages and and uh, different areas of of work now at each stage there is going to be a security uh, component to that and, and at each substage. So, for example, when we are doing the initiation, when we are, uh, well, when we're doing the initiation, uh, you know, there's a the concept and the idea and that sort of thing, but even just initiating the idea, ensuring that you have sufficient buy in on the part of the company for uh, the general idea that you're doing, you know, that making sure that the company, senior management, uh, agrees that this is uh, an important task to undertake. Um, simply getting that a agreement is it's part of the initiation phase. Uh, you know, not you don't have a full idea yet of what the uh, the project actually is, the system that you're developing, uh, what it's going to actually be in detail. But at least the general idea, you know, having senior management agree, okay, this is something to put some resources into, this is something to uh, work towards. And that, uh, you know, that's part of the initiation phase. And, and that is part of security as well, making sure that you have the required resources so that you are not wasting effort by putting a bunch of energy, putting resources into something which uh, senior management is at one point going to say, no, we never agreed to this, stop that. You know, you've, you've wasted a bunch of effort. Uh, you've wasted company resources by doing that. So, you know, that's, that's a part. Every, every sub-stage does have a um, component security phase for ensuring that you are what you're doing, you're doing properly. Um, when we are doing the initiation, the conceptual work, uh, forming the idea, um, start to get an idea of what the risks are going to be. Start listing what the risks uh, are going to be or, or potential risks so that you can uh, start a, a bit of a catalog that is going to guide you in the requirements phase and later in the design phase and, and on down into implementation. Uh, so each, each stage you're going to be looking at, uh, you know, user needs. You're going to be looking at alternatives, um, selecting uh, approaches and, and that sort of thing to, uh, to uh, build your requirements. Um, and in the requirements phase, again, you know, going through sub-stages to uh, uh, make sure that you uh, finish and, and finalize the requirements. Again, you know, I'm pushing for the, the waterfall model. Um, it's, you know, doing things right the first time is always the, the better way to ensure that it actually gets done properly and uh, works out in the end is is what you want it to be um, does what you want it to do contributes to the uh, uh, to the enterprise rather than just taking up resources so um, at each 
uh, stage in uh, the, the major, both the major stages and probably some of the sub-stages too, there is, are going to be different security tools uh, at the, the different phases. Um, we are going to have to look at risk management tools, the, the various types of risk management tools, at the implementation phase. Um, or, sorry, at, at the initiation, rather. Um, there's going to be various different types of code checks at the implementation phase. Um, there are uh, all kinds of tools there. And uh, one of the things <laughs> that I... I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on is fuzzing. Now, fuzzing, uh, this happens at the testing phase. Um, and fuzzing, uh, basically, you're throwing a bunch of different varying values uh, and a, a bunch of different variables um, at the system to see if it can handle it. Um, now, this is not just... Random to a certain extent, yes, you you throw some random data at it and make sure that it it handles uh, the random data. You know, throw a non-numeric variable at uh, you know non-numeric data at a uh, numeric field and uh, see what happens to it. Um, test uh, the the known. Uh, Sometimes improbable but possible user activities in, in their entry, uh, data entry uh, for the systems. Um, uh, validate the data. Make sure, you know, in, in testing with your, your fuzzing, you know, throw random data at it uh, and, and sometimes non random data, throw specifically wrong data at it. Uh, and there is the the old uh, joke that uh, a quality assurance engineer walks into a bar and he orders a beer. Uh, he orders zero beers. He orders nine hundred ninety nine million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine beers. He orders a lizard. He orders minus one beers. He orders a blitz. You know, um, you are, in, in some cases, deliberately choosing different types of bad data to, to make sure that the system is going to handle this properly. Um, so, uh, and oh, one more thing in the, in the testing area. Sanitize your test data. You, um, do not use real data um, when testing a system. The first time you use real data to test a system, that's going to be the last time you use real data to test a system. It may also be the end of your job. Uh, all kinds of stories about using real data for testing systems. It's, it's not a good idea.